This is the Schwinn IC4 and in this video we will be taking it out of this box and building it. We also have the Echelon Connect Prime here as well as the Peloton Bike Plus which we will be doing comparison videos comparing all of these bikes in the future. But here in this video we're going to be building the Schwinn IC4. So if you've been thinking about buying the Schwinn IC4 or if you already bought the Schwinn IC4 and you just need some help building it or you're wondering what the build process is like, we'll be going over that here in this video. So stay tuned and you're gonna learn some things. This Schwinn IC4 video has chapters, so you can check the table of contents in the description box as well as the YouTube play bar. You can skip forward and backwards in this video to find the particular information that is labeled if you don't want to watch the whole thing, that's okay. You can skip forward and backwards to find the information you need to learn how to build the Schwinn IC4 or any other labeled content in this video. Also, as you watch this video, if you find this information helpful or you enjoy this video, please click on that like button because that really helps support this channel. And if you have any questions about the Schwinn IC4 or any other indoor cycling bike, please leave me a comment in the comment section below and I will get back to you to answer your question or comment. One final thing I'd like to point out here before we get started building the Schwinn IC4 is if you have decided you would like to buy the Schwinn IC4, I put a link to the Amazon listing below this video in the description box. And if you buy through the link in the description box, that will help support this channel. So I'd really appreciate it. And that link has the best pricing over on Amazon where I bought my Schwinn IC4 and ours came here to my apartment in three days. They brought it straight up to the front door so the delivery process from Amazon was super smooth. With that said, let's get to unboxing the Schwinn IC4. And like I mentioned before, you can jump around in this video to find the particular information you need. And I don't think that was really the best way to do uh, what I just did there. Right away, before we even start building this Schwinn IC4, you can see what it looks like here. But I want to touch on just a few things that sets this bike apart from, well, let's say the Echelon Connect Prime over there. So that is a Bluetooth connected enabled bike. So is this one. The big difference here is this one has a screen on it already for you. So this screen shows your cadence as well as your resistance right on here. So you don't need to download any sort of app or anything to get those metrics. Whereas compared to the Echelon Connect Prime, you do need to download an app and have two devices running on there if you wanna say run uh, your metrics as well as the Peloton app on uh, a tablet. So this one, all you need to do is bring your own tablet and you don't need to hook up your phone as well. Anyway, when you get the Schwinn IC4, it will come in that box and it will take you quite a bit more time to build the Schwinn IC4 than what it would take you to build the Echelon Connect Prime. But no bike is easier out of the box than the Peloton Bike Plus because this bike comes fully assembled and whatever is not assembled, the team members will do for you when you get there. And one big benefit of the Schwinn IC4 that neither the Echelon Connect Prime has or the Peloton Bike Plus or even the standard Peloton bike has is these handlebars on the front of the bike are adjustable forwards and backwards. So all you have to do is get down here and loosen up this knob and after it's loosened up, they slide forwards and backwards. So you can get really stretched out, moving all the way forwards, or if you don't need it stretched out as far, you can slide them back. And it does have a fairly good amount of adjustment there. And here's what the Schwinn IC4 looks like completely built. Obviously, it's not gonna look like that when you get yours in your box back there. So we're gonna go over the steps here in the next few minutes. Here's what we're looking like after we got the Schwinn IC4 out of the box. Right away we can see it says IC4 right there and also the C6 which is the Bowflex from what I understand. So these bikes may be sharing some components. Here's the pedals and the wrench and some more tools that appears and levers for the seat.
Here appears to be the water bottle holders, and I'm really not even sure, but at first glance, I can tell you that the Schwinn IC4 appears to be much more difficult to put together than the uh, Echelon Connect Prime over there. It seems like there's a lot more pieces to the Schwinn IC4, and definitely both of these are way more difficult than the Peloton, because the Peloton just shows up, and it's already ready to basically rock and roll for you when the guys deliver it. So up here is the instruction manual, which I have a feeling we're going to need. Over here, it appears that it comes with some weights. And this would be the front of the bike with the rolly wheel so you can move it around. Well, I just opened up the pedals. And one of the first things I can really point out about the Schwinn IC4 that's different than the Peloton and the Echelon Connect Sport is the pedals that come with the Schwinn IC4 have cage style pedals on one side and the other side has the clip-in pedal for you. And I would say most people who are going to be doing indoor cycling will want to clip in. These are the SPD style clip-in uh, pedals, which is the same kind of shoes I have and Sabrina has as well. And the other side has the cages just in case you know if you don't already have some clip-in pedals. Also, we have these two pieces I unboxed, and then I'll point out the water bottle holders. One is labeled left, and the other one is assumed to be right. I'm not sure what this piece is yet, and we have a few other tools. So we'll just get to putting this thing together here, and it shouldn't take too long, I don't think, but it will definitely be my longest bike build so far. Go ahead and clean up a little bit of the garbage here. And so here are all the pieces that we need to put together. I'll get out the instructions and see what we have to do next. If this video is helping you uh, figure out and understand the unboxing process of the Schwinn IC4 and um, eventually help you build the Schwinn IC4, I'd appreciate it if you'd click on the like button because that also helps support this channel. And also, if you have any questions about the Schwinn IC4, leave a comment in the comment box below this video, and I will get back to you to answer whatever your questions are about this bike. It appears you need to cut off these zip ties before you can really start building the bike, and you should probably be careful not to scratch your beautiful new Schwinn IC4. Um, you know, if you put these scissors directly into the paint there, you might give yourself a little scratch right out of the box. Okay, so I thought that these zip ties were pointless and I didn't know why they were on there, but now it's becoming clear that apparently there is this uh, little, um, I don't know, a little piece of like plastic, just like a little placeholder basically, maybe to prevent the metal from getting bent. I'm not really sure, but anyway, this piece appears to go right back here. You just keep that lock nut in the correct place there. The washer goes just how you see it. And then you've got your Allen wrench here and you can just go ahead and tighten them up. While I'm here recording, I will point out that the Schwinn IC4 seems to have a nicer way to adjust the feet than the other bikes. So, Right here you can see is the Echelon Connect Sport and it has, I mean these are some nice rubber feet on the Echelon Connect Sport and then the Peloton over there has basically the same exact kind of feet set up as the Echelon Connect Sport does. But the thing that really sets apart the Schwinn IC4 is it has these this adjustable knob right here that allows you to adjust the feet and get them level from without having to like reach down under. So like on the Echelon Connect Sport and the Peloton, 
you have to like get under here and manually turn these feet and it's kind of difficult to do. Well, I'm over here, I'm gonna take this stuff off. Apparently this is the handlebars right here. Just kind of zip tied right on. So careful not to damage it, cutting through the handlebars. Or <laughs> obviously not cutting through the handlebars with a pair of scissors, but you know, damaging the rubber. So it just kind of comes right off of there. Just a quick reminder for you, injury or death is possible if caution is not used while using this machine. All right, we're up here on the front side of the Schwinn IC4 and we need to cut off these uh, zip ties. If you look closely, you probably can't really tell this in the video, but this, this metal is actually bent a little bit. And I think that, you know, the reason they insert this is to prevent that from happening. I don't think it's gonna be a big deal, but just a little observation. I have to admit, this bike is more difficult to build than the uh, Echelon Connect Sport was. So I'm just trying to basically cut these things close to where the bolt is going to go through. In case I scratch the paint, it'll be hidden down below the bolt. So you just unscrew these bolts. Remember to keep them in the right order with the lock bolt, the lock nut down below, and the washer on the outside. And then you kind of just lift this up a little bit, slide out this plastic piece, get rid of all these zip ties, and the wheels go out front. Like I was saying before, you can see that this is bent a little bit, but I don't think that's gonna matter whatsoever once we tighten down this bolt a little bit. As you can see there, it just pretty much flattened right out because I'm so strong I can bend steel. I would like to point out all I'm doing is just following the instructions here. Um, it's, there's little numbers here. It says one, two, and then three is the front there. I don't really know what one means, but so I just started at two and put the back on and then three is the front. Now it says step number four is to put on the uh, stem for the handlebars. So we'll do that. And you cannot really mess this up because the stem for the handlebars has this triangle kind of uh, square, actually square shape to it. And the adjustment knob for the handlebars is the big fat one. So these other two are much skinnier and smaller and you just you can't put it in the wrong place, so you can't mess it up. So all you do is you take it and drop it in there. This, this face is forward. As I'm building this Schwinn IC4, I would like to point out one observation here, actually two observations here. For one, the handlebars appear to be similar to the Peloton in the fact that there is not a hole, so they are infinitely adjustable up and down. And I'll show you how that contrasts to the Echelon Connect Prime here in a moment. But also, the one thing that appears at first glance here to be different about the Schwinn IC4 is the handlebars appear to have maybe an ability to slide forward and backward which the Echelon Connect Prime and the Peloton Bike Plus do not have that feature. And if you take a look at the Echelon Connect Prime, which is the same for the Walmart version of this bike, the Echelon Connect Sport, because I had that one, I don't have it here anymore, but this has a series of holes that it clicks into. Same goes for the back of the seat post. I have an entire different video comparing uh, this Echelon Connect Prime to the Peloton Bike Plus if you want to see that. But where the similarities lie is the handlebars on the Peloton Bike Plus are infinitely adjustable. There's not a hole that it clicks into. However, this does not have any ability to slide forward and backwards. The next step here is to put the seat post in, which I will point out this does have a uh, series of holes. So you will 
uh, not necessarily have like an, an infinite amount of adjustability in the seat in terms of up and down. You have to click it into one of these holes. Now that's the same exact thing as the Echelon Connect Sport here. There are holes back there that you click into on the Peloton bike. Plus, however, there are not holes on that seat post. So it just, you can adjust it infinitely basically. Anyway, we'll just slide this seat post on in there. Maybe. Yeah, I'm gonna have to set this down so I can use my other hand to pull that out. Easy peasy, it's a very simple process. And now the next step here is to put the seat on, which is listed as step number six, which calls for just the, the Schwinn seat here with this big uh, bracket on the bottom and one of the two of these, which appear to be the exact same to me. And then over here in our little tool bag, there are a series of washers and we'll take one of these big washers here and it just connects together with this, this, and this. And there you have it, the seat is now on. And here is the adjustable lever. You can just loosen it up, slide it forward and backwards. And when you have it where you want it, which you don't know yet, you just tighten that lever right up. The next step is to put the handlebars on, but before we can put the handlebars on, we should probably take them out of their packaging. Some nice thick handlebars. On the instructions here, it says that basically, uh, step seven here, just put the handlebars on and to use uh, just your remaining lever and washer. So don't forget the washer and then we'll just pop those right on. And just as I suspected, you can uh, adjust the handlebars forwards and backwards just by sliding them. Just loosen that up and you can slide it forward and backwards. So that is very different than both the Peloton Bike Plus and the Echelon Connect Sport. Both of those bikes, you cannot adjust the handlebars forwards and backwards. And I mean, this bike right here, the Peloton Bike Plus, is a very expensive piece of machinery. So, I mean, this bike, under a thousand. This bike, over two thousand. I'm not entirely sure what the point of those were, but I'm sure there was a point. I know that on the Echelon Connect Prime, there it came with like a little stopper down there like you see those two bolts on the bottom there was something physically pressed up against the flywheel to pre prevent it from possibly rotating now this flywheel it was uh the brake was already on it so they those things weren't they weren't doing anything the brake was just on on the schwinn the next step here calls to uh put the pedals on and we'll put the right pedal on first and i want to make a point here the right pedal you turn just normally to uh, tighten it up, you turn it clockwise, but the left pedal is counter-threaded, so you will actually actually turn it lefty-loosey to tighten it. Anyway, to put the pedal on, all you do is just go righty-tighty. And you wanna start by just hand-threading it to make sure you don't cross-thread anything. And then after you get it started and you know that it's and then after you get the uh, pedal started rotating, you can get out the wrench that comes in the box and just kind of snug it up. Once you got it pretty snug, you can kind of just give it a little extra twist. And it is kind of a self-tightening system. 
So that is why the left pedal is counter threaded. Um, so you don't need to go crazy really, snugging it up too tight. As I was just saying, the left pedal, well, I didn't say this yet, but the left pedal, you'll see the L on there. L is on the left crank arm. And the left side, you will actually turn lefty loosey to tighten this pedal. This is just how all bikes are because if it weren't lefty loosey, every time you took a pedal stroke, the pedal would basically be trying to unwind itself. And eventually over time, this would lead to your pedal likely falling off or potentially falling off while riding. Anyway, this is just how bicycles are built. So once you kind of get the left pedal started, same thing as the right side, just kind of tighten it up until it's pretty snug. If you want to preserve the paint on your bike, you may want to try and keep the wrench from touching the crank arm while rotating it so you don't scratch your paint putting the pedal on. So it's getting kind of snug and just kind of give it like a little extra twist. You don't need to go crazy because it is a self-tightening kind of system. Well, now we're starting to get there. The bike is almost completely assembled. There are a few other steps that we need to do and um, it shouldn't be too difficult or too much longer to uh, get this bike built. We just have a few more pieces there to kind of put on. And um, if this video is helpful to you, helpful in building your Schwinn IC4, please click the thumbs up button because I'd really appreciate it and it really helps support this channel. And also, if you are thinking about getting the Schwinn IC4 in, you know, if you've basically decided you wanna buy this bike, I have a link to the Schwinn IC4 in the description box below this video, which you can click on it and it'll take you over to the Amazon buy page where you can place your order for the Schwinn IC4. And that link, well, it doesn't cost anything extra to you, but it does help support this channel if you buy through the link in the description box. So I would appreciate it if you are planning on buying the Schwinn IC4 and you find this content helpful to please click on that link and buy there. And if you have any questions about the Schwinn IC4 that I haven't answered up to this point, or you haven't seen any of my other videos, which I will be having more uh, Schwinn IC4 videos coming up soon, you can leave a comment in the comment section below and I will be sure to get back to you. The next step is to put this piece on the bike. It's basically like the weight holder and water bottle holder and screen holder. All you need to do is remove these four screws up here and then you put that piece over top. Okay, I've got the four screws out. So what you wanna do is just kinda do it like this come from the bottom, set that up there. Once you get it aligned, then you can just drop in your four screws and begin hand tightening them a little bit. So the next step here is we remove these screws here and we put on the weight holders and water bottle holders. The left side is indicated by this is in the left bag, and which leaves us to, this is the right. So it should look like this when you connect it. And actually you use an Allen wrench for this to tighten them up. And then after you get those in there, you're gonna wanna just snug them up just a little bit. All right, I put on the other water bottle holder and weight holder, just the same way as the uh, right side. And you just wanna make sure that they look like that once you have them on. And then the final, well not the final step, but the next step here is to put the screen on. So I took the screen out of the box here and there's four screws in the back. You just unscrew them and then you put the whole thing right up on here. You just bring the whole screen right up here. Oh yes, and then you, so tuck that wire in there and just do it like that. And then you gotta line up the screws from the bottom side here. And now with the screen on, we have the wire right here and we just plug it right in to here, which I cannot do with one hand. If you look closely, you can see two arrows there pointing directly at each other. You just line up those two arrows and 
push it straight forward and connect it together. This is where you will connect in your power brick. So all you do is connect that in there, right on the front here by the flywheel, and then the other side, you just plug this into the wall. And the next step here before we are finished is to put on the Schwinn tablet holder. And all you do is remove these set of three screws right here. And then you just put this right on there and screw those in. And that should, be, that should about do it for building the Schwinn IC4. So I just did those three screws and the bottom one is actually stripped right from the factory. It's just turning infinitely. These other two snugged up just fine. And I think that will be totally fine for what I will be using this bike for. I'm not gonna be putting anything too crazy heavy. On. And here is the Schwinn IC4 completely built. It is now 157, so it took several, several hours to build, which is not true. It actually took me probably about two hours to build, but that was because I was filming and I think that it would actually take maybe one hour to build or less. Anyway, let's plug it in here after we do a little walk around. The water bottle holders seem a little bit wonky how they stick out this way. It seems like the water bottle holder. Oh, there you go. There's a weight. The weight holders are nice. I like that. But um, the water bottle holders seem like they might kind of stick out and like get in the way of my knees. Oh, we got a demonstration. Well, I'll just get on there then. Put my feet in the cages. So obviously sitting down, the water bottle holders don't get in the way. However, I am six foot five and they could potentially get kind of in, ooh, in the way there. Um, but you don't have to put the water bottle that way. You could do it like, you could set it like this. Or, I don't know. Maybe it won't work like that. Maybe it will work like that. Most people aren't 6'5", though, so. I mean, I think under normal circumstances, most people would be okay with knee clearance there. And the cord is kind of short, so I got an extension cord to reach there. And apparently, I have not plugged this in yet. All you do is plug it in right here in the front and we'll see what happens. Powering right up. So let me just get on and pedal and see what happens. So it's counting some time. Showing a speed. And it shows the resistance level. So you don't have to actually turn this thing that far to get the resistance to change pretty significantly. Like this, I'm gonna turn it, I'm gonna turn it like as far as I can here. So it was like one rotation, turned it about 10, 10 resistance levels. Oh, and that turn brought it down all the way to 53. And that brought it to 23. So like four turns will basically take you from zero to 100. So that's kind of nice. And apparently the RPMs, the cadence is up there at the top. I didn't even notice that at first. So I'm gonna crank this resistance to about 20 and just Pedal. So if you can see the little red bars up there at the top, it's kind of, it just shows like your, not your exact number, but how fast you're pedaling. Oh, let's get out the heart rate monitor. Here's the packaging for the heart rate monitor and the actual heart rate monitor is right here. I believe. And 
I guess so, yeah, I didn't know that. This looks like a charger for the heart rate monitor. So it looks like this would go, yeah, right on there to charge it up. So let's give it a try. Um, all right, so it might need to be charged. Also, some other things that come in the box are these, appears to be cleats for some SPD shoes. In case you don't have these on your shoes, I believe that's what this is. So if you have like SPD style shoes, but you don't have the actual cleat, it's right here in the box. Okay, I got my SPD style clip-in shoes on and I'm gonna give these pedals a test out here. And this video is really just intended to be kind of like an unboxing and show you how to build the Schwinn IC4. I have another video, it might already be out by the time you're watching this video, giving kind of like a more thorough review of the Schwinn IC4. And I'm gonna do some comparison videos of the Schwinn IC4 versus the Echelon Connect Prime. And also another Schwinn IC4, IC, excuse me. And also another Schwinn IC4 video compared head to head to the Peloton Bike Plus and really just kind of break down and compare how the two bikes compare to each other. So if you want to see more about comparison videos, check those out on my channel. In the meantime, if after watching the Schwinn IC4 unboxing and building video, if you decided the Schwinn IC4 is the bike for you and this is what you want, I have a link to this bike in the description box below this video. It'll take you over to Amazon where you can place your order for the Schwinn IC4. And if you buy it through that link in the description box, it will help support this channel. So I would greatly appreciate it if you are gonna buy the Schwinn IC4 to click that link and buy it through the description box. And also if the Schwinn IC4 unboxing and building video has been beneficial to you and helped uh, ease your mind about building this bike when you get it or helped you solve any problems you've had while trying to build it yourself. I'd appreciate it if you'd click that thumbs up and just click the like button because that also helps support this channel. Also, if you have any questions about the Schwinn IC4, leave a comment in the comment section below and I will get back to you. And also be sure to check out my channel because I have another video that's gonna really kind of go over the features of this bike and do kind of more of an in-depth review and show you how this bike works and probably answer some of the questions that you might have based on watching this video alone. But we'll go ahead and close out this video with throwing the iPad screen up here on the little iPad holder and hop on here and kind of try and do a little bit of a Peloton ride and just see how easy it is to do on this bike. Because over on the uh, Echelon Connect Prime here, or Connect Sport, basically the same bike, uh, in order to get your feedback, you, you need to hook up your two devices, you know, your cell phone as one usually to get the resistance and cadence on that bike. But this bike over here, you have this little screen built into the bike. So this is basically your connection right here and you don't need to uh, worry about hooking up um, your cell phone. You just need to turn on your, your uh, Peloton class here. So I got the clip-in shoes. Let's see if this works. Yeah. There we go. So yep, the SPDs clip right in. Feels nice. And we got our metrics right here on the screen. So super convenient. You don't need to worry about hooking up the, uh, you know, like the Echelon app. If you had the Echelon, it's just all right there for you. And at this point, I'm just assuming the heart rate monitor that came with it works. I don't know that for sure. However, if that one sucks, um, it is a Bluetooth connection, so probably another heart rate monitor would hook up to this. We'll find out in my next video. 
So there's a screen. Go ahead and unlock it. Go to the Peloton. And we could just join a class. And there you have it. This is the Schwinn IC4 unboxing and building video. I hope this video has been beneficial to you. If you learn anything in this video, please give me a thumbs up, click that like button, and share it with anybody that you think would benefit from this information as well. If you have any questions, leave a comment in the comment section and I will get back to you. So thanks for watching. Matt here at Tell Happy TV and I'll see you in my next video. And stay tuned for the next video because I'm gonna charge up this heart rate monitor and you just click it right on here and then we'll see how well this heart rate monitor performs.